In this video, we are installing a Nest self-learning thermostat on a system that has one of these three-port mid-position valves wired as a Y plan. one of those three port mid position zone valves by your hot water cylinder and your hot water cylinder is vented which means it's supplied by a cold water storage system in the loft wrongly called a tank I take a rock for a then most likely you do have a Y plan however if you go to your cylinder and you find that you don't have one of those but you have two valves that look similar and have two ports on them and they look more like this one so it has only two ports, then what you have is called an S-Plan. And for a video on installation of Nest on an S-Plan, click right there or find a link in the description. Before we start, let's make sure we have all required tools and materials. We'll need Nest thermostat, set of screwdrivers, you may need a cordless drill to fix your Nest and Nest base to the wall, wire cutters and wire strippers, multimeter, multi-core flexible wire, Schematics for Nest Y Plan. You will find links to the schematics in the description of this video below. If you want to follow along with the video installing your own Nest, it may be a good idea to download and print out those schematics now. Get your Nest and tools ready, make sure you positively identified your system as a Y Plan, and let's begin. This is a typical Y Plan installation. We've got twin channel programmer to control hot water and heating. We've got our wiring center where all components are wired to. There's a cylinder stat right here, room stat right there, and a three port mid position zone valve. There's also a simulation of a boiler right there. So if I turn the programmer for heating and hot water on, and I turn, let's say, cylinder stat up, you can hear the zone valve moves to W, which is water, and the boiler comes on. I can also turn the heating on and the zone valve moves to a mid position. If I turn hot water off, you're going to hear the zone valve click and it moves to heating. If I turn the heating off, the boiler is no longer on and the valve will stay in the last position. On three port mid position valve we've got five wires. Blue for neutral, yellow and green for earth, white, grey and orange. There's two wires that take switched lives, white and grey. Orange wire sends switched life to the boiler from the valve. So we are really interested just in those two wires. But with power to white wire only, the valve will go to mid position and the water will go to both. B and A, which is hot water and central heating. With power going to grey, the valve only opens to central heating and closes port B. With no power going to valve at all, it's open to B only, which is your hot water. That power to the mid position valve is sent from the programmer. So the programmer sends three switched lives for hot water off, hot water on and central heating on. And it sends it through cylinder thermostat and through room thermostat to the wiring center and then either directly to the boiler for hot water on or to the zone valve for heating on and hot water off. When we remove twin channel programmer, those three switched lives have to be transferred to Nest heat link. We will also have to remove the thermostat because Nest will act as a thermostat and Nest will be wireless. And those two wires going to the wiring center will use them to supply voltage to the Nest thermostat itself and will remove them from the wiring center. We're gonna find our means of isolation. In our case, it's a spare switch that I'm gonna turn off. If you don't have a spare switch, you might want to turn the power of out your consumer unit. And we have to remove the fuse itself. With fuse removed from our spare switch and spare switch turned off, we're gonna remove the cover of the wiring center and run some dead tests. We have to prove that the circuit is dead before we start any work on it. We're going to use a multimeter for that, set to alternating current, and we have to test across life to neutral, life to earth, and neutral to earth. On most wiring centers, life, neutral, and earth should be first three connections. 
We've just proved that the circuit is correctly isolated and can safely proceed with nest installation. We're gonna start by removing twin channel programmer cover. Most programmers will share the same backplate and it's usually held by two grab screws here on the bottom. So we have to undo those two screws and lift the programmer and remove it from the backplate. On the backplate of the programmer we have six connections in total. Neutral and live, first two connections, supply to the programmer and then we've got connections numbered one, two, three, four. Number one is hot water off and it's used. Number two is heating off and is unused. Number three is hot water on and it's used. And number four is heating on and it's also used. And we have one, two, three, four, five wires that we need to transfer to the heat link. Now it's time to install your heat link with screws supplied in a nest kit and remove the cover on the nest heat link, we've got a number of connections. We've got neutral and live. Then we've got one, two, three responsible for heating. One is heating off, two is common, three is heating on. Connections four, five, and six are for hot water. Four is hot water off, five is common, and six is hot water on. The only difference between that backplate is that there is no common on the backplate itself. So the way we need to move those wires, neutral and live will obviously go to neutral and live. Hot water off will go to number four on our heat link, which is hot water off. Hot water on, which is number three, will go to number six on the heat link. And finally, central heating on will go to number three, which is central heating on on the heat link. I'm gonna start by moving neutral life and earth to the heat link. Now we're gonna transfer hot water off, hot water on and heating on to the nest. It's a good idea to use your phone and take a picture of those connections so you remember what they are. Gray. Hot water off goes to number four. Brown hot water on goes to number six. And black heating on will go to number three. So we successfully transferred all the wiring from old backplate to nest heat link. There's one thing missing though. Commons, which is number two and number five on those connections, will supply power to our switched lives. In other way, whatever is supplied to number two gets switched to number three when there's call for heating. Whatever is supplied to number five gets sent to number four if there is a call for hot water off and to number six when there is a call for hot water on. And right now, those common terminals have nothing supplied to them. So we have to supply power to those connections. And the easiest way to do that is to run links between life and two and life and five. So we need to run jumper wires between connections life and two and two and five. Connection life and two. And connection two and five. With the heat link fully wired up, our next move is removal of existing thermostat right there and installation of the actual Nest thermostat. We have two options here. We can either use an additional base for our Nest that's charged through an USB connection or we could reuse thermostat wires going to the wiring center Trace those wires going from the stat to the wiring center and connect them to 12 volt supply from the nest heat link to our nest thermostat. If we do that, then we will have to install nest thermostat in place of existing thermostat. First, we have to remove existing thermostat. We have to trace those wires back to the wiring center. In my case, 
call for heat going through the thermostat is terminal 3 on the heat link so I have to trace black cable to my wiring center and that black cable goes to terminal 4 in my wiring center so this is the cable going to the thermostat on terminal 4 basically trace a cable from call for heat from the heat link to the wiring center and see which cable it connects to I'm gonna undo that connection pull that wire out and then there's another cable blue cable right here which is a second connection going to the white cable on the zone valve your call for heat comes from the programmer to brown and then blue sends power to the white on a zone valve your wiring might be different but what you have to do trace a cable coming from call for heat from the heat link connection number three and then trace a cable connecting to a white wire on the zone valve and disconnect both of them in my case it's a connection number four and five it looks like those two wires are coming from the stat we have to confirm that and the best way to do that is to use a multimeter on a continuity setting to confirm that in fact those are the wires that we're looking for I'm gonna use crocodile clips to connect those two wires at the wiring center then I'm gonna use my multimeter at continuity tester with the sound if there's continuity there's sound if there's no continuity there's no sound open line we just confirmed that in fact we've got correct wires that's a plate for nest thermostat we have to fix it to the wall in place of existing thermostat connect T1 and T2 on that base to T1 and T2 on the heat link don't connect your nest there just yet pull the cable from the wiring center and transfer it to your heat link connections T1 and T2 all connections in the heat link are completed right now and we've got 12 volt supply run to the nest base there's one more connection we have to do on the wiring center if you look at it now if there's a call for heat from nest it goes on the black wire to terminal 4 in the wiring center and terminal 4 is not connected to anything we have to connect black wire from the heat link call for heating to the white of the zone valve so right now white is sitting on its own in terminal 5 and black call for heating on is sitting on its own in terminal 4 so we either move 4 to 5 or 5 to 4 so that's the last connection we have to perform on on the wiring center and that completes the installation so I'm taking out the black wire from terminal 4 and I'm moving it to terminal 5 to connect it to the white wire your terminals might be different so all you have to do is to trace call for heating on cable coming from terminal 3 in the heat link which is heating on and you need to connect it to a white wire going to the zone valve and that completes the installation we're ready to turn the power back on as you can see I still haven't installed my nest what I want to do I want to turn the power back on and I want to see if I've got 12 volts going to the base in case I've mixed my wires with 12 volts going to my base tested and confirmed it's safe to plug my nest in and turn the power back on now I'm gonna set nest up first thing is equipment do you want to enter your nest ID you can skip that connect heat link wirelessly what kind of heating system do you have? you need to scroll to system boiler heating on off source gas continue hot water on off now eco temperatures is when you are away so that's the 
a lowest temperature that the nest will allow uh, the temperature at property to drop to. It's 9 degrees by default, we can leave it at that. Would you like to control your nest via app? Yes. And we've got an entry key for an app, so now it's time to download your app and put that key in. Nest asks for a permission to spy on me. I think you have to allow that. Access to my camera for what? Right, looks like we are done. When it comes to testing your new nest, there are two things you have to be aware of. One of them is antibacteria setting on your nest. It has that symbol that you can see right there. And what it means is that the nest will send hot water on signal, although your hot water program may be off. Usually when you install it, it will send that signal. And then it will send the signal for hot water on if there is no hot water on on the program for more than 48 hours to prevent bacterial growth in your hot water cylinder. Second thing is your boiler anti-cycling prevention. Once the boiler fires and then stops, it will not fire again for a fixed amount of time. It might be 5 minutes, it might be 20 minutes. It all depends on the boiler and it depends on its settings. Let's say you're gonna test your heating right now. You're gonna turn your nest on and wait for the heating to come on. Heating came on. You think, okay, that's fine. Heating's working fine. I'm gonna turn it off. And now you want to test hot water. You turn your hot water on, but the boiler doesn't fire. And it doesn't necessarily mean that your wiring's wrong. It might mean that the boiler has anti-cycling prevention and it will not fire for a fixed amount of time. After you've tested it for heating, turn the spur off, wait a few seconds, turn it back on and then test hot water. Obviously my boiler doesn't have any prevention at all. So yeah, it's gonna fire no problem. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you managed to install your nest without much trouble. Click subscribe button, give me a like, leave a comment and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys!